Welcome to this uh, lecture series on aspects of western philosophy module 37 lecture number 37. This uh, lecture will uh, concentrate on uh, the philosophy of uh, Jean Paul Sartre a prominent uh, existential philosopher French thinker of 20th century. In fact, we have already mentioned in the previous uh, lecture about the importance of Sartre as an existential philosopher, because it is actually uh, when we talk about existentialism today, uh, there is a by default reference to uh, Sartre, because he is so associated with this moment. And, uh, if at all there is a philosopher who is a complete existentialist, probably we can say that it is Sartre, because all other philosophers were uh, sort of you know for example, uh, uh, Heidegger, Heidegger is often associated with uh, existentialism and uh, many consider him as an existentialist, though Heidegger himself uh, did not want to be considered so. Uh, but Sartre was uh, on the other hand, Sartre consciously associated himself with existentialism and try to defend existentialism as a philosophical position. Uh, apart from his magnum opus being a nothingness, he has written many other works including a small book which actually is a defense of existentialism. The title of the book is uh, existentialism and humanism and uh, uh, the major themes of this lecture would be uh, following this small book is actually written in order to defend the philosophical position of existentialism from it, uh, its critics. So, we are going to address some of the important uh, issues which uh, Sartre considered are philosophically central to existentialism in this lecture. Now, uh, when we talk about Sartre's conception of human existence, uh, there is a notion called being for itself, which he uh, very carefully distinguished from another concept which is being in itself. What are these concepts in detail we are going to address it in the next lecture, because the next lecture primarily focuses on these concepts, but being for itself for the time being let us understand it as the being of man. Uh, it is something which is very similar to what Heidegger considered as the, as in the uh, being in the world, uh, while Heidegger was emphasizing on the situatedness by saying that you know the the the, scene, the being of man finds itself in a world uh, which is uh, ontologically related to its being. Sartre is uh, rather trying to analyze the structure of this being of man and he asserts the importance of one aspect the aspect of freedom. Comparing uh, the being of man uh, from the being of other entities which are which he calls being in itself. The being of man is uh, essentially incomplete, because uh, it exercises freedom and with the exercise of freedom it make choices and through with this making such choices it creates itself. So, in that sense uh, Sartre's conception of uh, human existence is quite unique and uh, uh, it emerges and uh, comes into being by negating its essence. So, this is a very important aspect of Sartre's conception of man because man according to him emerges into being by negating its essence. Any attempt to a priori decide what is man say for instance something called human nature or essence of man these are conceptions which Sartre would uh, uh, deny from the very outset by negating the being in itself. The being in itself is something which is fixed for example, uh, the being of uh, this uh, remote controller it is being pre-decided, pre-determined by the creator of this, this object or any a knife for that uh, another example to take another example or a pen. I mean the uses of these things are pre-decided, pre-determined, but in the case of man uh, whatever way in which you try to define man, in the case of man, man's activities in this world after he or she comes into existence what he or she does by exercising this freedom of choice, this is what is going to matter and that would decide what man actually is. So, the essence is decided by existence. So, this is what we have already seen in the previous lecture, when we discussed this notion called existence precedes essence, which is actually coined by Sartre. Uh, 
freedom and negation are central to the conception of uh, Sartrean concept of man in that sense. So, now the statement existence comes before essence was made by Sartre in his uh, that is book which I refer to existentialism and humanism, where he categorically states that in the case of man the being of man is so different remarkably different from the being of other entities which are fixed in advance. What both the Christian existentialist and the existential atheist have, a co have in common is, the, is this, this fundamental doctrine that existence precedes essence. This is again an observation made by Sartre, because it is Sartre who uh, when he writes this book he made a distinction between existential philosophers who are theists for whom God is an important philosophical concern and people like him who are existential atheists who very consciously and deliberately deny the existence of God. So, in one sense as we have seen in the previous lecture that uh, there is a kind of diversity in the conception of human existence or uh, various other things which, which these thinkers who are uh, labeled as existentialist deal with, but at the same time there is something which is common whether they are theist or atheist there is one aspect that is common according to Sartre and that point is that essence or rather existence comes before essence. And uh, when in, in developing his uh, philosophical position uh, uh, Sartre was uh, visibly influenced by many thinkers particularly notably by Kierkegaard, uh, Nietzsche Husserl and Heidegger, he himself acknowledges the importance of these thinkers in shaping his ideas. So, let us see one by one, uh, let us see Kierkegaard, Kierkegaard is again uh, something which you have already examined in the previous lecture, uh, a thinker who has given a lot of importance to man's relationship with God. The third aspect, the third stage of life according to Kierkegaard, the first two are aesthetic stage and uh, ethical stage. But the third stage is a religious stage, which uh, we, where you know man stands in direct relationship with God, and that subjective experience of uh, you know his faith in God is very important according to Kierkegaard. But uh, uh, ironically, Sartre is one philosopher who is uh, who has uh, opposed any conception, or rather, he is a theist. He is an atheist to the core and theistic thinker. But still, he says that you know this notion, Kierkegaard's notion truth as subjectivity has influenced him and also according to Sartre influenced and inspired all existential philosophers to conceive their thinking in a particular direction when, when Kierkegaard said that truth is subjectivity. He Kierkegaard protested the omission of man in the total unfathomable inwardness of his being from the whole history of the development of ideas. This is Sartre's own words like where he has uh, I mean this protest against the against the omission complete omission of man from the whole history of the development of ideas as we have seen again in the previous lecture that the theory of ideas the, 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 the philosopher the traditional philosophy has always been either a theory of ideas or a theory of the world. There is no man figuring in, but Kierkegaard comes with this problem and says that truth is subjective stress on the individual man here and now, here now concrete individual man, man in his passion and anxiety and emphasis on personal experiences like as we see so yesterday uh, in the previous lecture the, uh, the, the three stages from one to next, uh, the passage from one stage to the next stage is actually not a rational uh, not based on any rational universal uh, strategy or plan but it is a personal choice which each individual has to make a ch his, his own choice in his life uh, taking into account of uh, several factors that influence and shape his life. So, during the intellectual disorder this is what this is an observation which uh, Sartre uh, makes about the influence of uh, uh, Kierkegaard, he says during the intellectual disorder between the two great wars his influence in Germany was associated with certain currents of post Nietzschean thought. So, uh, so interestingly uh, Nietzsche is on the other side on the other extreme who has categorically asserted the, the death of God and, uh, but somehow you know in the, the he says that during the intellectual disorder between the two great wars 
some of the Kierkegaard's uh, conceptions about uh, uh, you know or is associating the concept of truth with subjectivity and the post Nietzschean philosophy they got sort of associated with each other. Now, let us see what is uh, uh, Sartre's take on Nietzsche. Sartre says that Nietzsche was an existentialist in his almost romantic emphasis upon the passion, anxiety and decision of individual man and had a sense of the tragic predicament of humanity in modern civilization. So, though it is very uh, it is ironical in one sense to consider Nietzsche as an existential philosopher, but uh, Sartre considers him as an existentialist philosopher and uh, with this uh, as I said you know romantic passion emphasis uh, upon the passion, anxiety and decision of individual man and has a sense of the tragic predicament of humanity in modern civilization. So, in all his you know his conceptions of uh, uh, freedom, uh, his uh, idea of death of God, then again uh, the distinctions he makes between master morality and slave morality and uh, ideas about creating one's own self, the emphasis on conceptions like will to power, all these are concepts which Sath was uh, attracted towards. Nietzsche's criticism of Christianity particularly because Christianity as a religious institution, as an organization of power uh, was uh, criticized by Nietzsche. His conception of the transcendence of passion and intellectualism through the power of some purely inward integrity of mastery. This is again this is the kind of will to power he emphasizes on the, the transcendence of passion and intellectualism through this, this power something which man finds within himself. Uh, according to Nietzsche the will to power is a fundamental drive which man has to discover within himself and exercise it and values are estimated based on purely subjective criteria. There is no objective universal measure to decide that a particular set of values are important. When we have discussed uh, Nietzsche's contributions uh, in one of our previous lectures, we have uh, identified the, the, the kind of evolution which Nietzsche suggests from uh, camel to lion and from lion to the child, where at the stage of the lion there is a violent no, I mean a kind of rejection of all morality and once all morality is rejected, it creates a huge vacuum which needs to be filled in. And this is filled in not by a rational conception of morality, but by subjective criteria. Now, uh, it is very interesting to see how these two thinkers come together. The two thinkers are fall apart, Sath himself says, of course, but that means that the world of ideas which their relative positions define is recognizably the same world. And Nietzsche's criticism of Christianity with regard to its negative bearing upon man's complete individuation has points of relation to Kierkegaard's sublime anti clericalism. So, both of them in one sense opposed the established church or the kind of dictum which was projected by uh, the established church as the essence of religion. For uh, Nietzsche, it was a complete rejection of Christianity as a religion, as a moral philosophy, but for uh, Kierkegaard it is a kind of uh, you know sublime anti clericalism. And Nietzsche's superman and Kierkegaard's knight of faith are both conceptions of the transcendence of passion, transcendence of passion I repeat and intellectualism through the power of some purely inward integrity, which we have already seen in the case of uh, 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 Nietzsche when Sartre makes such an observation in his existentialism and humanism. Now, another very remarkable influence on Sartre's philosophy uh, is uh, Husserl, the, uh, the phenomenologist whose uh, conception of phenomenology we have already seen as part of uh, one of our lectures in this uh, lecture series. So, here again you know like all phenomenologists or for all phenomenologists the central philosophical concern is uh, consciousness it is phenomenology is actually basically a study of consciousness. And uh, Sartre also takes up consciousness as a very important component in his philosophical theory. So, but again the interesting aspect about uh, phenomenology is that all phenomenology is right from 
uh, Husserl approach consciousness from a very different angle, not from the traditional philosophical perspectives, but in a very different way. And uh, this is naturally you know influenced many th thinkers, actually Husserl's approach to human consciousness, conceiving consciousness as fundamentally intentional in nature. I mean when you consider consciousness as intentional, it means that consciousness is always consciousness of or about something. So, there is a kind of outwardness, it points to something else outside itself. So, in that sense uh, understanding consciousness in a different light is very important, consciousness is first and foremost a consciousness of something. So, this is a fundamental Husserlian idea and again consciousness is a being such that in its being, its being is in question. So far, in so far as that this being implies a being other than itself, because this is a very interesting aspect. When uh, consciousness is a being such that in its being, its being is in question. Okay, this is uh, an observation made by Sartre. In so far as this being implies a being other than itself, because since consciousness is always consciousness of something else, it implies always what. Uh, a being other than itself, it always points to something else and again consciousness is about something, this aboutness points to an existence other than its own and to its own existence as a question. So, this is what is a uh, very interesting aspect, an interesting dimension of consciousness which uh, probably one who studies Husserl would get enlightened upon. Now, Sartre was not ready to accept Husserlian position in Toto. Sartre was very careful when he assessed Husserl, he was opposing the kind of transcendentalism or the notion of transcendental ego which Husserl was uh, trying to advocate or rather that was so central uh, to Husserlian phenomenology which Sartre opposed. Sartre accepts Husserl's intentionality principle, but demystified consciousness by rejecting transcendentalism and again consciousness is nothing, but a consciousness of being conscious of the object before it. So, this is how you know Sartre is uh, demystifying Husserlian notion of consciousness. He is actually trying to argue that this point is very important, consciousness is nothing but a consciousness of being conscious of the object before it. There is nothing a mysterious entity like transcendental ego which stands against an object uh, which is the object of uh, consciousness. Uh, which intentionality principle reveals to us, but rather it is nothing but a consciousness of being conscious of the object before it. So, uh, it says that consciousness is a being the nature of which is to be conscious of its being and if there is anything as knowing consciousness then it is knowledge of an object. So, you cannot really uh, separate consciousness from the uh, knowledge of an object. So, that is what it says if there is anything as knowing consciousness then it is knowledge of an object. Individual finds himself in the world of objects which constitute the unity of his consciousness and the I, I mean for Husserl there is a transcendental I, but here Sartre says that the I appears indistinct through consciousness and is not as a pure transcendental ego. So, you cannot separate the I from the process of being conscious of something. So, they are so indistinct according to Sartre and uh, there is no ego consciousness distinction, ego consciousness distinction, there is no such distinction which, which was so central for Husserlian phenomenology uh, is uh, this is rejected by uh, uh, Sartre. Now, uh, for uh, Husserl again uh, he proposes a method, the method of phenomenology is the method of bracketing and ultimately what Husserl does is he brackets the world and uh, brackets everything and finally, he applies this method to the self itself. Now, bracketing the empirical self results in a kind of uh, uh, you know isolation of the transcendental self, the transcendental ego uh, in Husserlian phenomenology. Hi, Sartre would say that even this can be isolated, this can be bracketed, not that I have consciousness of this computer which is there in front of me. Say for instance, I mean I am conscious of a computer that is in front of me, 
Sartre would say that it is not that I have consciousness of this computer, rather there is consciousness of this computer. So, you cannot separate the I or the me from the me being conscious of something on any occasion for that matter, there is no isolation of the pure I possible at all. So, uh, it can be like uh, something like this, this is the I or ego and this is uh, the object the computer in the world. Okay. And now uh, what is it, uh, I have consciousness of the computer. So, here as if there is an ego here on the left hand side you can see the ego, then the consciousness of uh, the computer or the object, then the object itself. So, there are three things apparently here, so here you have consciousness of the computer, the ego and the actual computer, this is a picture which Sartre would reject. He says that there is no fixed ego, but always consciousness of something say of table, of flower, of pen, of man, of computer and various other things we come across. So, you cannot separate the I which is conscious of these things from these activities or processes of being conscious of these things, that it is a, it's a kind of artificial abstraction according to uh, Sartre. Now, let us see the idea of consciousness and being, it says that the phenomenon of being is disclosed to consciousness. So, this is, this is very close to the Heideggerian notion, because there is an idea of disclosure, the phenomenon of being is disclosed to consciousness and uh, that is the being, being is in itself we can say and being is what it is, being of phenomenon is radically different from the being of consciousness. So, here Sartre Sartre makes a very important distinction between the being of an object or any phenomenon for that matter and the being of consciousness, which is the being of man one, one can say. We have already started discussing the notion of consciousness in Sartre, the intentional consciousness which is uh, a very different kind of being according to him. Consciousness is being for itself and uh, here comes Heidegger's uh, philosophy, how Heidegger has influenced uh, Sartre. Heidegger's work is the principal source of contemporary French existentialism according to Sartre. I mean contemporary French ex existentialism means his uh, theory and many others who were associated with existentialism in France. There is nothing beyond man himself that can solve the problem of man's existence, this is Sartre identifies this uh, concept this notion as uh, the center point in, in, in uh, uh, Heidegger's philosophy that there is nothing beyond man himself that can solve the problem of man's existence. The concept of being in the world and thus ends authentic existence are so central to uh, Heidegger's philosophy, we have already examined this in the previous two lectures that how the being in the world uh, and uh, you know the existence of Dazin, existence of being in the world, the kind of possibilities Dazin, the man can either have an authentic existence or an inauthentic existence. So, these possibilities are uh, extremely important for Sartre to understand, to conceptualize his theory about human existence. Dazin is being's destiny, this is again a, a very interesting uh, Heideggerian idea truth and knowledge are possible because of Dasin and Sartre was influenced by the account of human existence as both free and situated as uh, Heidegger conceives uh, it, man is both situated and also at the same time free. See there is an account of facticity which Sartre himself provides when he discusses human existence or human consciousness uh, uh, separately, what he says is that man's existence is situated no doubt about it, there is a world in which man finds himself, uh, but at the same time uh, unlike other entities which are not just which are neither situated nor free. In the case of man, man is free, because human essence is not predetermined like the essence of other objects like a pen or a knife. So, here uh, bring I mean here he introduces this concept of existence precedes essence, 
the assertion of particularity, individuality, concreteness and contingency. So, when you say existence of man precedes everything, you are emphasizing on these aspects the particular man, because existence of each man is bound to be different. Essence you can talk about if at all there is an essence like the platonic essence or any essence I mean notion of essence is always a historical it is not particular it is always universal and it has nothing to do with the individual rather the individual himself is only a copy of this essence that is the way essences are conceived in philosophy. But when you talk about existence it is inevitably bound to be a kind of a particular entity you are referring to a particular individual. So, particularity, individuality, concreteness and contingencies are emphasized and then the rejection of the platonic idea the ideal human that determines what we are the essence of man who predetermines our life in this world that is completely rejected. And uh, since there is nothing like a predetermined essence of man which would decide what man is the easiness the that uh, uh, assures a complete freedom, since there is nothing like that which predetermines man's existence man is free. Man first is and then he makes his essence through his choices uh, he makes in this world when he lives. And again man is what he conceives and wills himself to be and atheism is natural for such an existentialist like Sartre. So, I am just going to discuss Sartrean atheism, because that is so central to Sartre conception of existence, human existence, human destiny and uh, various other things associated or various other problems associated to the problem of human existence according to Sartre. So, he says I repeat man first is and then he makes his essence through the choices he make. I decide for instance, I can decide what I want to do, whether I want to be a, uh, a teacher or uh, a writer or a musician these things are to a very great extent discussed decided by me. Of course, based on my abilities I have to decide things, but even see suppose even I am so gifted an artist a musician that does not mean that I should uh, necessarily take up the profession of a musician. I can still prefer to be some something else and uh, again you know being a harness man for instance or being a crook these are all my possibilities I can be either a crook or a honest person these are my conscious choices. So, when I decide to contribute a certain amount to the uh, you know what you call developmental activities uh, in my country or not to do that I am making a choice and this choice would ultimately make what sort of a man I am. So, I can be either a philanthropist or a miser all kinds of possibilities are open to me for uh, Sartre atheism is so natural in the sense. So, here uh, there is uh, this is what Sartre writes in his existentialism and humanism which he considered was the first principle of existentialism I quote man is nothing else, but that which he makes of himself that is the first principle of existentialism and this is what people call its subjectivity using the word as a reproach against us, for we mean to say that man primarily exists that man is before all else something which peop, uh, propels itself towards a future and is aware that it is doing so. Man is indeed a project which possesses a subjective life instead of being a kind of moss or a fungus or a cauliflower before that projection of uh, the self nothing exists not even in the heaven of intelligence man will only attain existence when he is what he purposes to be. So, he is not just a fungus or a cauliflower whose identities or whose being are predetermined by their essences he is not just like a computer or a knife or any other objects in the world he is uh, nothing in the beginning before the projection of the self nothing exists. So, I mean through my projects I project myself I do certain things I have certain plans to do so and I will be pursuing those uh, plans and projects and with that I create myself. Again the human individual is a subject rather than an object a person rather than a thing 
man's being is being in the world this is again Heidegger once he comes into being he and others will start defining him. So, this is a very interactive process a social process a political process and Sartre is well aware of it the kind of political social cultural and other aspect involved in creating oneself. It is a process where you know man, when man comes into being and he and others will start defining him. So, the essence is created through his actions definitely since he lives in a world he lives in a world of other human beings the impact of other human beings would definitely be there and he is quite anxious about it. So, all those factors ultimately define what his actual being is. So, in one sense we can say that he defines himself he creates himself not fixed and uh, predefined essence in terms of which he understands him and uh, actually his existence is different from a pen or a computer that have uh, that have fixed essences. Man makes himself through his choices and actions he creates an essence for him. Again essence is a product of a person's mode of existence something which the way in which I exist decides my, exist, my essence the way in which I exist means the kind of person I want to be which I have consciously adopted or there is a possibility of consciously adopting it. And if I say that I have not consciously adopted it or I have not consciously done certain things according to Sartre that is bad faith that is something which you are running away from your responsibility which, which is which is equivalent to exist inauthentically. So, man makes his essence each man is different there is no common essence. So, that is what since existence precedes essence and existence of each human being is uh, bound to be different the situations context and everything the context of actions the mode of thinking everything is different. Since man makes his essence through his actions and choices and uh, the actions and choices of each individual is uh, are bound to be different from each other. So, there cannot be a common essence which all human beings would be jointly creating essence depends on its subjectivity therefore, there is no fixed and ever changing never changing essence which is universal. So, essence of the other things and of man are in that sense very different because in the case of other objects the essences are defined a priori objects like a paper knife has been uh, made by an artisan who had a conception of it and the paper knife's essence which is the sum of the formulae and the qualities which made its production and its definition possible precedes its existence. This is all examples given by Sartre himself in this book. On the other hand he says the conception of man in the mind of God is comparable to that of the paper knife in the mind of the artisan if at all there is a God. So, once you conceive that there is a God who is a creator of man then God can be compared to a kind of an artisan a, a person who made the knife had an idea about the knife in his mind. So, all this uh, you know the sum total of the formulae and the qualities which made its production possible. So, similarly God if at all God exists God also might have had a similar kind of idea about man and uh, produced man accordingly God makes man according to a procedure and a conception here human essence precedes man's existence. But uh, here uh, the interesting aspect is that the idea of human nature the conception of human being found in every man is emphasized if the talk about human essence would emphasize would focus on this the there is there is a kind of human nature a conception of human being found in every man each man is a particular example of a universal conception if such an essence exists then it precedes his existence if there is a universal uh, nature if God has created man out of a blueprint that existed in his mind then definitely there is no doubt that essence precedes existence. And God in this sense needs to be conceived as a supernatural artisan the will either follows from the understanding or at least accompanies it this is what Sartre says. In the case of God creating man what happens is that uh, he knows precisely what he is creating there is a clear blueprint in his mind. Each individual man is a realization of certain conception which dwells in the divine understanding. So, in that sense 
human essence is predetermined. Now, let us come to Sartre's position. I have already mentioned that Sartre is an uncompromising atheist, he denies God's existence, God cannot exist. And uh, to demonstrate that there is no such universal human nature, uh, Sartre envisages or Sartre ventures to prove God's inexistence. He demonstrates how human beings are different from other entities like the paper knife. He, to show that while entities like paper knife have a creator, an idea before its prediction, man does not have a creator, God does not exist. So, this is Sartre's atheism and uh, he says that human beings have no model or blueprint, God does not exist and hence in the case of the being of man existence comes before its essence. We will actually discuss in fact uh, for, uh, for Sartre when he discusses the problem of being, he uh, basically tells us that there are three types of being possible, being in itself, being for itself and being for others. And uh, being in, in itself is a complete entity like a paper knife whose essence is predetermined, it cannot be anything else but a paper knife and uh, being in for itself is uh, the being of man. So, the idea is that uh, Sartre is trying to prove that God's existence, if, it, if God exists then God is at the same time being in itself and being for itself. We will discuss the details of this argument in the next lecture and this involves a kind of contradictions, no one can nothing can be at the same time being in itself and being for itself, if being it in itself then it is fixed it has no freedom, a knife has no freedom, a computer has no freedom, it cannot be but a computer, it cannot be but a knife, but in the case of man it is not so, man is free being for itself is free, it can be a musician, a Hindustani musician or a Carnatic musician, a painter, if I decide to be a painter I can be a realistic painter or an expressionist or an impressionist or a cubist or a surrealist whatever mode of uh, expression I prefer, I have various choices uh, whether to be a honest man or a dishonest man or a crook all these are my choices. So, in my case or in the case of man uh, the, the existence is prior to essence, man is a being which exists before it can be defined by any conception of it and absence of a model is the it uh, that indicates the absence of norms and standards. See if there is no such idea of human nature, there is no such predetermined a priori conception of human human essence, then there is nothing which regulates human existence. I mean there is something which very strongly regulates uh, human existence or our life. So, we are not free in that sense, we are completely determined by this so called human nature or this human essence. If that is the case then there is no freedom, but uh, Sartre asserts the opposite, he says that man is free there is no such human nature or human essence which determines his uh, existence prior to his uh, coming into being. So, in that sense there is no model, there is no standard, there is no norms that would tell him very strongly what course of action is the right course of action. So, in other words we can say that there is the conceptions of good and right, the conception of value, meaning of life, there is nothing which pre exist, there is nothing which predetermine human existence, value of my life is something which I have to conceive the meaning of my life is something which I have to realize and understand, it is I who decide what meaning my life has through my activities, through my choices. So, the absence of a model indicates the absence of norms and standards, absence of values and no pre given meanings for human life. And uh, this uh, uh, Sartre says is the first effect of existentialism, it puts every man in possession of himself as he is. So, every man in possession of, him, uh, of himself as he is, so I cannot be someone else, I cannot say that I am doing certain things because that is what all humans do, I cannot say that there is nothing like something which or, or a model of man or, or universal human nature based on which I can say that this is what all human beings do, there is nothing like 
or what all human beings do, no universal norms and standards of behavior, man does things on the basis of his choices, conscious choices and he is free to make his choices. It places the entire responsibility for his existence quietly upon his own shoulders. So, I cannot blame others by saying that oh I did it because see this is what often we come across people saying that circumstances led me to do certain things or the, 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 the kind of pressure of circumstances I did certain things. So, Sartre says that all these are instances of bad faith which we will discuss in the next lecture the concept of bad faith. Bad faith. So, uh, here what he says is that you cannot run away from your responsibilities uh, and this is from existentialism and humanism all the actions a man may take in order to create himself as he wills to be there is not one which is not creative at the same time of an image of man such as he believes he ought to be. So, he says that there is I mean every action you take you perform. Uh, may take in order to create himself as he wills to be is based on a choice a conscious choice. I decide I am going to be a kind of man like this and based on this conception I make a choice and do act. So, this brings us to the problem of responsibility, when we make a choice between alternatives we are affirming that what we have chosen is valuable. So, when I am making a choice say for instance or to protest against the government for instance, the protest against the government policies let us take such a concrete example. When we make a choice between alternatives I have alternatives I can either be silent or be part of the protest, when I make a choice either to be silent or to protest I am affirming that what I have chosen is valuable. So, whatever is the alternate whether to be part of the agitation or just keep mum and silent both are choices which I make which I can make and whatever choice I make I am actually uh, uh, asserting that uh, this course of action is valuable. So, there is a value I am creating a value which is valuable for me we cannot choose the worse because I am choosing it for me and what we choose is always the better and nothing can be better for us unless it is better for all. So, when I make a choice I do make a choice in a world where I share with other people. So, there are others. So, when I make a choice I am indirectly suggesting that that is the better choice available which means that this is a choice which is available for each one of you for everyone. So, we are responsible not only for our own individuality, but also for all men. So, this is the problem responsibility the problem of responsibility is that see Sartre takes this example of a general who orders uh, shooting and in that process it is his decision to attack and in that process some soldiers die. So, in one sense we can say that it is his choice to attack and his decision to attack his decision has led to the death of several number of soldiers. So, he is responsible for their death, but as an officer as a military general he has to take a decision he has to make a choice. So, you and you cannot blame him, but then at the same time he knows that it is his conscious choice he has alternatives either not to attack or to attack whatever choices is he makes it is his personal choice in one sense we can say, but when he makes a choice it affects others it ultimately resulted in the death of 10 soldiers for instance then he is responsible for that. So, and when he makes a choice he asserts that or he affirms that that is the better choice for others as well. So, we are responsible not only for our own individuality, but also for all men and this creates this awareness that our responsibility concerns mankind as a whole results in a kind of anguish a kind of anxiety it creates in and when I know that I have to act in such a manner that humanity regulates itself by what I do this actually frightens me that my decision I mean I am presenting myself when I, by making a choice I am presenting myself as a model in front of humanity that humanity all human beings can adopt this model. So, this actually frightens me the weight of my responsibility not an anguish that leads to criticism or inaction this is something which 
Sartre would assert because of course, uh, freedom brings responsibility. If man is free, then man is responsible for his actions, you cannot run away from your responsibility. So, even if I remain inactive that itself is a kind of action, which is based on a choice, a conscious choice I make and an action I perform to be inactive. So, the example which I have taken to be part of an agitation, political agitation against the government, whom I consider has done wrongs or not to be part uh, of the agitation. Whatever decision I take, I am responsible for that, because I am free to take either this or that. So, this weight of responsibility creates a kind of ang anguish, a kind of dread in my mind, but this does not lead to qu quietism, because quietism is you know that is impossible even to be inactive is a conscious choice. And this freedom, responsibility and anguish do not separate us from performing the action, anguish is a condition of action itself, this is what Sath is trying to argue. For every choice human beings make, if you are consciously aware of it, you can find this element of anguish, you cannot avoid it, it is a condition of all human action. So, here uh, he talks about in this connection he talks about abandonment another very important concept in existentialism, uh, again from existentialism and humanism. Uh, what Sartre says is Dostoevsky says that if God did not exist everything would be permitted and that for existentialism is the starting point. So, from this uh, statement which Dostoevsky makes in his brother's Karamazov, if God does not exist everything is permitted, because there is no moral governance possible then, there is nothing which binds man to act in a particular way. It is the conception of God which uh, the divine wisdom, the divine justice, the conception of divine justice uh, uh, upon which you know our conceptions of right, good conduct, goodness all these things our conceptions of value and meaning everything is based upon such a, such a notion of God. So, once such a notion of God, such a concept of God does not exist, then anything is permitted. So, this is the implication of Nietzsche's death of God. So, which according to Sartre is a starting point of existentialism, with the disappearance of God all possibility of finding values in an intelligible heaven to disappear. So, there is no God's world, the, the world of God that exists, the previous lecture we have seen how Dostoevsky drives us to that kind of a situation, where in a conversation between Ivan and uh, Alyosha. So, with the disappearance of God according to Sartre, all possibility of finding values in an intelligible heaven too disappears, there can be no longer be any good a priori, there is no universal conceptions of goodness and rightness, since there is no infinite and perfect consciousness to think it. And in this connection another very important concept is abandonment. Uh, as I already mentioned, it is nowhere written that again Sartre says, it is nowhere written that the good exist, that one must be honest or must not like, since we are now upon the plane where there are only men. So, there is nothing a universal humanity or God or supernatural uh, realm of which predetermines human morality the choices are ours, individuals are concrete, each individual is concrete, each individual's uh, situation and context of life are different. So, the decisions and choices they make are bound to be different from each other and in this context Sartre says the famous statement man is condemned to be free, because as I already mentioned man is uh, there is freedom, because man is not created by God, there is no blueprint a priori blueprint that exists in the case of man like unlike other objects. So, since there is freedom there is responsibility, choices are to be made by each individual and there is no model available, the individual cannot really go and ask someone else and take a decision accordingly, then that would be that someone else's decision, each individual has to negotiate with his or, his or her life and take decisions accordingly. So, in that context what happens is that creates a kind of anguish in the mind, anxiety, uncertainty about future, the thinking that the very thought that you know the actions which I perform, the choices will uh, which I make have impacts might be uh, might be having certain impacts uh, and also when I make a choice 
I actually choose for the entire humanity. So, I am responsible for the entire humanity in that sense all these things create a kind of anxiety very uncomfortable anxiety and Sartre says that in this context freedom becomes like this man is condemned to be free there is, but this is human situatedness you cannot run away from this, uh, this, this situation where you find yourself as a free human being. We are completely free condemned to be free since there is no God to give us essence we must create our own essence we are completely responsible for our actions and are responsible for everyone else's too because we are free to create our values and our world we must exist in anguish for loneliness and despair. Sath would conclude that man is condemned to be free there is no way you can escape from this situation the, the, the existential situation in which man finds himself. Let us try to wind up this lecture the next lecture we are going to discuss the, the concept of uh, you know being uh, the three kinds of being, being in itself, for itself and for others. So, this lecture is actually an introduction to that, we have already seen some of the major concepts of existentialism in the previous lecture and this lecture was concerned was basically uh, uh, trying to understand uh, Sartre's conception of human existence, he distinguishes consciousness from other entities being in itself and being for itself, consciousness is being for itself which is intentional in nature and uh, from this concept he comes to his atheism, he asserts atheism the absence of God and he would say that this absence of God ultimately results in a conception of human being without any model. So, man is absolutely free, freedom makes man responsible and responsibility creates anguish and anxiety, hence man is condemned to be free. So, the situatedness the existential situation the existential context in which man finds himself. So, or rather the very nature of human existence itself is bearing upon it this weight of responsibility. So, we will wind this uh, lecture here thank you.